In 1907, there was a large crowd of people. They all gathered in a place called Stuttgart in Germany. These people had come from all parts of the world to attend a meeting. This meeting was called the International Socialist Conference. Now, the interesting thing was that one of the attendees was a lady. She was clad in a sari. She had come all the way from Paris, and her name was Madame Kama. When the organizer asked if there was anyone there representing India in that meeting, Madame Kama raised her hand. So, in that meeting, a flag was raised for each country that was participating in the conference. So, the moment Madame Kama raised her hand, one of the organizers came forward to hoist the Union Jack because the Union Jack, which was the flag of Britain, also was supposed to represent India because Britain controlled India at that time. But Madame Kama would have none of this. So she stepped forward, opened her handbag, and pulled out a silk flag. And this flag had the words "Vande Mataram" written right in the middle of it, and it had a bunch of other colors on it. And she said, "This is what represents India. We are going to be freed from the British, and this is our flag." And Madame Kama's flag was one of the earliest instances of an Indian tricolor. Being hoisted anywhere in the world, it was not the first flag, but it was one of the earliest flags. The tricolour that Madame Kama hoisted sowed the spirit of free India, but the flag itself has changed quite a lot since then. How has the flag changed? What stories do we have behind the flag's changes? This episode that you are listening to is part one of a two-part podcast series. On the evolution of the Indian flag, part one comes out on India's Republic Day, the twenty-sixth of January. In the second episode, we'll narrate stories about the man who was responsible for designing India's tricolour flag. Hi, you're listening to What's New Today, a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our lives. This is your host Sangeeta, and joining me in this episode is. Hello, my name is Taksha Lanki. I study in 3B, a spiritual academy. I'm nine years old. I live in Mumbai. Hi, Taksh. Welcome. Ah, uh, do you go to school on the 26th of January, or is it a holiday for you? It's a holiday. But do you wake up early in the morning and watch TV and see the fabulous Republic Day parade? Yes. Like seeing airplanes flying and making a flag. Yes, I know it's a real wow moment. So, Tash, let me start with a few trivia questions. Can you try answering them? And I think along the way we can help our listeners also discover stories about flags in general and about the Indian flag in particular. All right? Okay. So here is my first trivia question. Suppose you were looking at a ship, and on top of that ship you see. a rectangular piece of cloth and on that you can see some skull and bones on it what kind of a ship do you think it would be it would be like a pirate ship yes imagine you were looking at a big battlefield and there's a man on a horse is galloping from the opposite side maybe the enemy side but he's carrying a rectangular piece of cloth which is completely white in color what do you think is going to happen next i think no i don't know what is the feeling no so usually it means you know what we don't want to fight anymore can we have peace and quiet and can we all go back to living our lives normally are they either willing to surrender or you know they're saying i don't want to fight anymore so a white flag in the middle of a battlefield usually means peace just like that if you were to see a tricolor flag somewhere with an ashok chakra in between that would represent our india our india yes Do you think all flags are rectangular in shape? 
or do you think they may be in other shapes like circular triangular also they can be in any shapes have you seen circular flags for any country no no is there a rule that all flags in the world have to be only rectangular no there is a story behind why most flags in the world are rectangular in shape so many many hundreds of years ago when ships would be sailing at sea people wanted to know which country that ship belonged to so they told all those ship captains you know what you all have to fly a flag atop your ship so that you can tell us which country you belong to if the countries were friendly to each other they wouldn't attack each other's ships so when these ships were sailing in sea and they had to choose a flag they chose flags that were rectangular in shape because rectangular flags flutter in the wind better now over a period of time many countries started adopting the same flag that was flying at sea on land so that's why worldwide most of us only have rectangular flags today wow when india's flag was first designed instead of an ashoka chakra it had another symbol in the center what was that symbol it was a spinning wheel mahatma gandhi used it Mahatma Gandhi used to make his clothes by the help of charkha. Wonderful. The man who designed the Indian flag was Pingali Venkaiah. Do you know any anything interesting about him? Any stories that you want to share with us? He uh, designed sixteen flags. So before the final design uh, that we have today was accepted, he. designed 16 different flags for india he published them in a book and then he sh- took that book and i think he showed it to mahatma gandhi in one of the yeah, congress sure. meetings and then gandhi ji made a small change to one of his earlier designs and that's my next question so in one of the earlier designs that pingali venkaiya had recommended it had only two colors what were those two colors orange and green Yes, it was red and green. In fact, very very close. I think then Pingali Venkaiya wanted to show uh, the two predominant religions that were there in India, which was uh, Hinduism and Islam. Yes. Then Gandhi ji suggested, but there are people who belong to other religion also, right? Who do live in this country. So why don't we include one more color? White. and then of course much later closer to indian independence india adopted the tricolor flag that we have today they replaced the charkha with the ashok chakra in it what do you like more taks do you like the idea of ashok chakra or do you like the idea of the charkha in the indian flag i like the idea of charkha because it charkha represents mahatma gandhi and you like anything that represents mahatma gandhi like all of our indian rupee notes have gandhi ji's face yes the people who were struggling to get independence they were also using charkha that's right it definitely represented one of gandhi ji's ideas it also represented a lot of people in india the charkha right but then i have a very 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 important question for a third grader are you all being taught how to draw the indian tricolor flag when in school yes which is easier to draw the ashok chakra with a compass and one circle or you put a coin and you draw or the charkha which one of these would be easier for you to draw ashoka chakra hana would you still recommend having the charkha then no 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes now if you had the homework to draw the indian tricolor flag i think we'll just stick to what we have it's a much simpler design right yeah, yeah in in fact the real reason why the ashok chakra came about was little bit closer to this of course i don't think people were thinking about 
third graders like Taksh getting a homework, uh, you know, on how to draw the Indian tricolor flag. The real reason was also that the spinning wheel, right? It'll have one long side on one side, a shorter side on one side. So there is a concept called symmetry, uh, which means, you know, it's it, it, it shouldn't be a little bigger on one side and a little smaller yeah. on one side. It should be somewhat balanced. So the Ashok Chakra brought that balance or that symmetry to the flag. And that's one of the reasons why people recommend it, that we put that instead of the Charkha. Although just like you, Mahatma Gandhi also wanted the Charkha. He was not very keen on the Ashok Chakra, I believe, in the initial stages. Before we wrap up this part one of this series on the Indian flag, here's our quiz time. Question one. When Madame Kama hoisted an Indian flag in 1907 in Germany, which words were written right in the middle of that flag? Vande Mataram. Question two. The first flag that Pingali Venkaya designed had only two colours on them. Name those two colours. Red and green. The third and the final question. Which symbol did Pingali Venkaya use in his version of the flag before it was changed to the Ashok Chakra? The charkha or the spinning wheel. Did you enjoy listening to the stories in this episode? Taksh and I had a lot of fun chatting about them. Now before we wrap up this episode, here's an invitation to children who love reading books. I will be hosting a book review session with children aged 8 and above. This is not a podcast recording and any number of children are most welcome to join this chat. I'll discuss uh, with children about what they liked about that specific book that we're going to be discussing in that month's book review. I would also love to know what the children would do differently, you know, if they wrote the book. So if you would like to be a part of our book review for the next month, you can find a link to this in the show notes below. Our book review chats are always free. You can also send me an email at hello at wsnt.in if you can't find the link to this. Tune in to part 2 of the podcast series on stories of the man who designed India's flag. Episodes on what's new today come out every Monday and Friday. Thanks for listening.